CA125 is a fairly common blood test that's ordered mainly in context of ovarian cancers. CA125 stands for cancer antigen 125. Cancer antigen because uh, it was discovered while research was going on for treatment for ovarian cancers in the 1970s. Ovarian cancer treatment uh, had obviously various modalities including chemotherapy, radiotherapy, immunotherapy was also being uh, checked at that stage. Immunity and the immune system is our body's natural defense mechanism. Antibodies are produced that then target specific proteins called antigens mainly in pathogens which is which are bugs like uh, bacteria and target them and destroy them and this was the principle that uh, was uh, being experimented however such antibodies would normally attack even normal cells and therefore the aim was to find a specific antigen for ovarian cancer cells which these antibodies could target and in the process this antigen that was thought to be a very specific antigen for ovarian cancers was found called CA125. The 1 to 5 number stands for the 125th attempt. It may not have been 125th but it only uh, goes to show that there had been successive and multiple attempts at finding it. After having said all this, we have to admit that uh, CA125 by no means is specific to ovarian cancer. In fact, it is produced by the lining cells, the epithelial cells of the normal female genital tract, so the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and even by the lining of the whole tummy, of the abdomen, the peritoneum. It is also produced by the lining of the coverings of the lung, and the heart, the pleura and the pericardium. And therefore, not unexpectedly, CA125 would be raised in a whole range of different conditions, mostly benign and some other cancers as well, apart from ovarian cancers. The general uh, number that we almost always quote is 35 international unit, that's the upper limit of normal of CA125. And this number uh, was derived at in the initial phases when the, uh, the target immunotherapy uh, was, being, um, was being researched. It was seen that in women who had a CO125 level of over 35, 82% of women who had ovarian cancer, and as I will uh, further uh, disclose later, that uh, women who had advanced ovarian cancer, that is stage through 2, 3 and 4 ovarian cancers, usually had a CA125 level over 35. In reality, it's much over 35 in most cases. Almost 82% of women who had advanced ovarian cancer had uh, a CA125 level of over 35. In the normal population, in contrast, it's about 1 every 888 ladies who had uh, a raised CA125. Now, uh, in the benign conditions, as I said, CA125 is raised in a whole range of different conditions. And the commonest condition is actually menstruation. During menstruation, the CA125 level can be raised almost twice or three times the normal levels. And in fact, during the first phase, the first half of the menstrual cycle, the first 14 days during the proliferative phase, the CA125 can also be raised. Apart from this, pregnancy raises CA125 and endometriosis, fibroids, acute pelvic infections can all give rise to a raised CA125 levels. Even some benign ovarian tumors that leads to uh, conditions called Meeks syndrome can also raise the CA125 level. Apart from gynecological causes, various gastrointestinal or bowel causes like diverticulosis, appendicitis, pancreatitis, various liver conditions 
and even heart failure can give rise to a raised C1 to 5 level. Anything that can irritate or inflame the lining of the tummy, the peritoneum. CO1 to 5 levels can also be raised in other cancers apart from ovarian cancers like uh, cancers of the pancreas uh, and even breast cancers that have metastasized uh, into the peritoneum. With regards to ovarian cancer, it is roughly estimated that one has to uh, do 100 CO1 to 5s to to diagnose one case of ovarian cancer or rather uh, it would be one in hundred cases where there would be a raised CA1 to 5 level and ovarian cancer together. Also, not all ovarian cancers give rise to a raised CA1 to 5 level. It is only with the specific types of ovarian cancer called epithelial cancers and even in epithelial cancers, not all epithelial cancers give rise to a raised CA1 5 level. Mucinous cancers and clear cell cancers often don't have a raised CA1 to 5 level. Nevertheless, it's still a useful tool, mostly in conjunction with other parameters, the clinical aspects and an ultrasound scan in most cases. So it's still used for diagnosis, but it's preferable and most spe more specific in postmenopausal ladies. Uh, because in postmenopausal ladies, the other benign gynecological conditions like endometriosis, fibroids, pregnancy, menstruation, uh, and even pelvic infections are, uh, are not factors. And therefore, if the CO1 to 5 level is raised, and in particular significantly raised, generally over 200, uh, then there is a greater likelihood of an ovarian pathology, ovarian cancer. Um, this is for diagnosis. Uh, for, uh, however, uh, it is not very specific as I said, uh, particularly in premenopausal women. It's not also very sensitive because we would ideally like to diagnose ovarian cancer at a very early stage, stage one as we call it in the FIGO classification. Uh, and because at that stage if we can diagnose then we can treat it. However, most stage one cancers, uh, uh, almost 50% of stage one cancers will still have normal CO1 to 5 levels and therefore it's not very sensitive as such. It's only in advanced cancers that 82% of the time uh, a CO1 to 5 level will be significantly raised. And this is the very reason why it's not an ideal screening tool. In screening for cancers, we would ideally want a very sensitive and specific marker that would be, uh, that would detect cancers at a very early stage and would be specific ideally for the cancer. And it is not as we have seen it. And therefore, it's not a very useful tool for routine screening of for ovarian cancers. It may have some role, however, it may be important in women who are at high risk of developing ovarian cancers, mainly in those who have a strong family history or a genetic predisposition like a BRCA gene. With regards to monitoring of treatment, once a woman is treated, it may have a role, it has a role in monitoring the response to the treatment, whether one is the treatment is helping or not and lastly in ovarian cancers which has been treated and has been cured uh, it may have a role in early detection of a recurrence of cancer however present evidence suggests that it does not however change the survival rate but it may uh, have a role in detection so in summary c125 is a useful tool it's a non-specific uh, substance found in a blood test mainly done in uh, detection of ovarian cancers but it is not a very specific marker it can be raised in a whole range of various conditions mostly uh, benign uh, and therefore not very specific particularly in premenopausal ladies however it does have a role particularly in postmenopausal ladies in detection and diagnosis of ovarian cancers thank you